Hi guys, Bolt here once again. I got a really interesting fight and this will be a prime example of why to take over your flanks because a lot of people, they only see this when they look at this map. I'm only seeing this when I look at the map, all right? Because I love fighting on hills and forests and I love to flank and do all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna be playing on the right side here. I will be keeping it on my point of view for a change with replays. I've been keeping it in neutral, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to do it this way here. Just to kind of give you like a, you know, a me POV, a bolt sauce point of view here. So, you know, also not just hear my thoughts, but also kind of see them and see how I would think in that situation. So we are playing with like an airborne division that we got going on here. First time trying it out. Got a bunch of Akulas. We got a bunch of Desant Nikis in BMDs. Got some Spetsnaz. We also have some Iglas going on here. And uh, the main plan is for us to take over Hotel, capture Foxtrot, but also try to do some fun things here and like perhaps try to go to this little, these little settlements. Also, these are some beautiful houses, damn. Those are some big old houses, man. Is that a farm? I guess it's a farm or something. That's crazy. Oh, that's a big old house. Anyways. Let's get started here. Let's hide that panel. So we got an MI-20, MI-2 just going to the right side to keep an eye on them. We got two Akulas. Beautiful helicopters. They do be pretty. One is an AA variant, the other one is an anti-tank variant. Basically just to, you know, be there as a deterrent. Let, the, let them know that we could just mess their day up if they do try to do something. That's basically their entire goal here. So we have uh, Nom de Guerre going to Delta. His task is to capture that. And also a little bit of Bravo. And we got Prots on the far left. I'm not quite sure what divisions they're playing with. Nom de Guerre seems to be playing with SPG-9s, fake Jaegers. Okay, he's playing as a... Uh... What is he playing as? I don't know. He's playing as an East German one, but I forgot which division. Might be the DDR. Or KDA, I'm not quite sure. I think it's the KDA division. Pretty sure it's KDA division. So right now, I noticed these Blackhawks landing right there. But it makes me think they didn't really push up here. So I'm moving my Spetsnaz up just to the edge of the forest. To set up a position that I can easily defend. And they're also like a tripwire kind of unit there. We're investing heavily on the right side here. Bunch of man pads. Got six man pads going there already. On the left... Prots is doing a pretty good job here just to set up a good recomposition. And we got uh, Jaeger, Metis teams, flapping vehicles on the left and fighting aero rifles. Pretty good units. Pretty good units to have. Base American riflemen. But they're actually not that bad. MIH with the rockets though. Yeah, that'll, that'll hurt. So we got Spetsnaz in there. We got some Desan Nikis in there. This way we have anti-infantry and anti-tank. Ready to go. We can do whatever you want with that. So having this position, another thing that I am trying to do more in, in this game is to have a secondary defensive line. Basically, this is our line of contact, then I want to have like a fallback line and then like a good defensive position. That's how I'm uh, trying to play from that one. So we got a bunch of man pads coming to the right side there to secure that. We have some Spetsnaz in the bank, in the back. That's on Nikki's as like a, you know, a fallback position just in case things go south. And these guys are just going to hang out there. This way, if these guys get destroyed, we still have these guys to hold them off. And then we have some backup here in case we need to reinforce them. And now you will see something that is very important to do as well. As soon as I take care of these rifle units, I fall back with the Spetsnaz that are now out of the RPOs. I replace them. And, uh, you know, get them rearmed, resupplied, and then move them back to the front line again. But another thing that I'm doing now is after engaging someone on a line, fall back. You know, fall back one, one tick or whatever. Fall back a little bit, 100, 200 meters. Because you're going to get RD'd. Or bombed. Or both. So right now, blue team is gaining plus two. We don't have a command in uh, Echo or Golf yet, so it's all good. I'm getting one for Golf here in just a minute. 
And we also have a command going for uh, Foxtrot here. Which is going to be uh, going to put us ahead quite a bit here. So our infantry has arrived. Desert Nikis and BMDs on the right side. We have UAZs with Iglas being unloaded everywhere. We even have a supply helicopter coming in. And this is how I just love to play it. Just dynamic battles. I just find this, you know, kind of boring. Just battling it out on like a small line. That's just boring to me. Here you can see the artillery coming down on our old infantry position. My dudes are nice and safe over here. We got supplies incoming. Infantry is moving back near back here to get uh, resupply at the MI-8. All is well, all is well. We moved those units that we had here to this tree line to, you know, set another position that we can uh, give like a cross, you know, some covering fire across here in case we do need to fall back even more. All in all, pretty nice position we got going on here. Somehow, Prots on the left did a really good job. I always fail on this, on this side of the map. Because I, I play a little bit too defensive. I set up here, I set up here, and in this force, and then I wait until I have like enough units to push with. But most of the case, most of the time, the enemy has just about the same units as you have, so... If you have not that many units, he probably also doesn't have that many units. The RD Barrage is continuing. It is, however, scooped up a little bit, so we are getting a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of stress on our infantry, but luckily it doesn't last too long, so pretty good there. Manpads have unloaded, they're going to get in a nice defensive position all across this ridge line here. And we're getting some more recon out as well, selling those empty trucks. We still haven't gotten a command for golf, but uh, here it is. And the nice thing with this update is you don't need to keep a command in there. As you can see, a hotel is captured. There's no command in there, so you can just put a command in there, drive it somewhere else, capture that, drive it somewhere else, capture that. Or just, you know, keep it in there if the enemy also has a command in there. That way you both kind of, uh, you know, neutralize it, so to say. So these guys, I moved them up. They're good on ammunition. These guys are falling back. You reload at the MI-8. Uh, more specifically, the Spetsnaz has fallen back to get reloaded there. And now we're moving a lot of units in. So the plan here is to make a push for this little town at this point. So we have mortars coming in to give smoke cover. We have some more infantry and BMD-2s. And we have T-64Bs coming in as well. And also some Spetsnaz, you know, some special forces never hurt anybody. This one, Nikki's making short work of that M113. Mechanized rifles getting stunned in the smithereens. What I'm thinking now is he just already'd me. Let's make him think we're pushing after him, but then actually fall back. Because he's probably going to like target this area here with his artillery. So that's kind of like the thought process I'm going with. Right now, we're just falling back with these guys to somewhere where basically he wouldn't think we would go after seeing his units flee just to await that artillery. But he does have scouts here, so we do have to push up with these guys a little bit and do some damage. But I'm at least clearing out this little blob. Alright, so our infantry and mortars and tanks are all arriving on the right side. We got our Spetsnaz in position almost. These guys are mainly to, you know, defend the force, but also perhaps to push up. Uh, on the left, on my left, Nom de Guerre is doing a pretty good job. He has a really nice, like, overall spread out force. And he's also covering this with a bunch of ATGMs, SPG-9s and Recon. And Prots on the left is doing a really good job of just... Keeping him busy and actually being in the enemy side of the map. Really good. There you go. Did we get bombed or... I think this was Napalm actually. I kinda missed it. We got a really nice group of units though. Spetsnaz. With the double PKM and the Descent Nikis with the RPG-7s. Super nice combination. I'm just trying to move my anti-tank infantry to... Deal as much, you know, 
transport damage as possible, so to say. And now since we're getting rd I immediately just fall back and get them resupplied at an MI-8 that we now have on the front line. I actually managed to land that guy right there. Which is going to prove to be very essential. Because these guys, without RPOs, they're basically useless. I mean, they are decent. They're 12 men. Special forces. They're still gonna, you know, chew ass and eat bubblegum. But with the RPOs, they, you know, they don't really take that much damage. Alright, so we're moving up the tanks a little bit here. We're moving up the transports. We're just getting ready here. We got plenty of man pads. We got supplies. Everything is looking good. Everyone is all, everyone is all happy. But now we're getting already exactly where our units are. So what I'm doing is actually move in. Yeah, he's just firing all over the place. It's either inaccurate artillery. Oh, it's mortars. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, he's just mortaring everything. Yeah, those are actually mainly aimed at the back. So we're, we're doing really good with our infantry. I love infantry micro so much. We're just making sure our Spetsnaz isn't at the edge of the town here so that we get, you know, fired at by all of these units. The Cobra over there is a bit of a problem though. We do have Iglas. We have a bunch of Iglas. We have an Akula here. But even though we have all that, the Tow Cobra still has a good line of sight on our infantry so we just immediately fall back. Um, towards the cover of our AA here. Now on the right side, the Falcon gets absolutely annihilated by the quad stack of Iglas. Somehow, we hit. Somehow we hit, and we took that out. I do not expect that to happen. I'll be very honest with you. Now the MI-8 here did its job. It got our units supplied, but it has to boogie. Got a little bit too close there for comfort. Iglus. Pretty long uh, reload time on that as well, actually. Missing twice. Nice. What is the chance of that missing twice? It's like 26.5% or something. Okay, hit the third one. Not too bad. That'll make him fall back. There you go. Very nice. Okay. You know what? I'll take it. So at this point, we initiate our grand plan. We have mortars smoking off the town here. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, but they have an ATGM team in there or two, so I didn't want to really deal with that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have smoked it so that we can give fire support with our tanks. But in this case, I smoke it off so that our infantry can move in without any major issues. We have some more infantry coming in to unload right here. And, uh, you know, try to do some flanking maneuver right there. They don't really have anything here. We have recon right here. We don't see anything. So that is only a logical place to push from. So here we go. T-64 is moving into position here to give fire support. We got our infantry moving up. Spetsnaz loaded back up into their trucks to charge forward. And this is really going to be the next part of the battle here. OH-58C did try to take out our MI-2. But he only has miniguns, so I don't know if he was actually trying to take it out. But luckily we have four man pads here. They are a little bit out of range. Oh, they're just in range for the OH. Wow. One tap. Clean one tap on that one. Now the Toe Cobra is going to be a problem. But I'm just hoping for him to... You know. Kind of be overwhelmed by the choices there. An SU-25 coming in to basically take him out with a gun run. Really powerful way to do... Or way to use it. And here we go. There's a little bit of... There's a bit of infantry in those buildings. Took a little bit of damage there. SC-25 coming in. Taking that out. No issue. No problems. Going for the Fighting Falcon. Probably going to get clapped here. But we did a good amount of damage to him. Here we go. Spetsnaz made it out of the trucks. Now fighting some scouts. The MD-2 is coming in. Trying to just deal as much damage as possible before we get absolutely shrecked there by whatever that was. And we get some more Spetsnaz 
on loading in those. And these guys are going to be easy pickings for the Desaniki. Oh, the Desaniki is not Spetsnaz. But yeah, at this point, I'm moving up to T64Bs to try to take out that M1 Abrams. And basically, we cleaned up this little, little area really quick. Now the Akulas are battling it out against the OH-58C with uh, the Stingers, but he is now out of uh, out of those. So we shouldn't really have any issues with that. Oof. Nasty fire support here by the T-64Bs. And there goes that infantry. Both of ours and his infantry, mind you. Kind of a double-edged sword right there. We got some more infantry coming in here to help on the right side. In Foxtrot we're just kind of just hanging out to be honest. T-64Bs, wow, actually taking out that tank, very nice. But the only thing we're lacking here is AA. And there comes an A-10, the bane of our existence. Is that going to take out all three of our tanks? I kind of think it did. There goes one. Oof. Man, that is that is rough. There goes the third, actually. I don't know how we lost the third one. Maybe to the Toe Cobra. That was not a that was not a fun time for those T sixty fours. Not the fun time. Not the most fun time. So we're quickly moving some Akulas up. These BMDs are still chilling. Kind of forgot about them to be honest here. But we got two Akulas moving in to try to take out that Toe Cobra. And the AA Akula can actually take out planes as well. It's it's fairly accurate with that. But the main thing I want to take out is the Cobra. Whatever we do after that. Not a problem. A10 does come in though with his burp. Does take out the Akula, unfortunately. But now we know what to buy. More manpads. More AA. More of everything. Making a little bit of a move over here to kind of keep him busy. Because we are fighting Burt on all fronts. Now that he's occupied on the right side. We're just using this chance to kind of destabilize his front line over here. Always a good idea to fight on multiple fronts at the same time. MiG-29 being called in to deal with the A-10. He is basically almost done for. But Grigor is still hungry and we take him out. Beautiful plane. Wow, the OH-58C almost clapped us. Unbelievable. What the hell? OH-58C has almost took out the MiG-29, okay. Very impressive. Alright, well with that taken out, basically we're just moving up some uh, some more of our helicopters. I'm hoping that the A basically the OH-58C is out of manpads, or uh, stingers. And then we can do some damage with these guys. Don't know what these are now. Oh, just some M113s. Nothing major. Finally our manpads arrive. Mechanized rifles here are not going to be a big of a bit of a problem. They're not going to be a problem. SC-25 coming in for the Kiowa. Really, really decent way of taking out these helicopters. 190 points versus 155 points, guaranteed kill on them, like every time basically. And then SC-25 versus A-10, pissing him off enough for him to, you know, evacuate. That's a win for me right there. Oh wow, this MiG-29 is not having a good time. We might lose this. We'll probably lose that. But yeah, with that we basically take over also the right flank. Isn't that fun? That's how you should be fighting these battles. In my opinion. I have no idea what I was doing with this guy, by the way. We're 100% losing him here. Yep. Oh my god. That is one lucky plane. Abramov. The lucky mob. The lucky dude, man. And my 24 is literally almost out of everything. Jaeger out of Claren just holding on for dear life. We'll get our Igla units moving up. Go Cobra did get hit by something. I don't know what, what we hit it with. Probably just a plane, to be honest. Let's see if it's gonna hit this one. Nice. And there she goes. So with that, we are controlling like 
territory wise i'm controlling 40 percent of the front line but because of that boxtrot is wide open now boxtrot is wide open we have so many man pads here if he does a bombing run here and, and evacuates from the left that plane is that plane is gone like it, it's not coming back we got a nice um, logistical situation going on we're reloading or rearming at the mi8 it's just all in all really good experience right there still we still got some bmp2s just hanging out no need for them to do much right now but we're finally moving them up a little bit also what is that military outfit brother is that just a tank top basically So yeah, that was a ton of fun. Like, even if there is no conquest point here, there... Honestly, there should be. There should be something. I'm seeing way too many maps with a flank with nothing on it, and it's kind of just wasted space. This may be a small conquest point or something. Like, I don't know, one, like one right here. Like, all across this line, maybe. That would just be a ton of fun, and just maybe increase, like... I mean, it's a 4v4. It could be a 4v4 map if there is one more slot, slot there. It's just me, though. That's just me. Don't listen to me, please. Alright, we got uh, some grads firing. 24 rockets, 122 millimeters. Basically meant to stun whatever might be in this little blob here. It's not really... Why is that hitting the same place all over again? Come on. It's not really meant to destroy anything. It's just meant to, like, piss them off. Just enough. As you can see, it's just going to stun some things, and, you know, that's it. Now comes the grand push, because we are seeing Nom de Guerre push with an unholy amount of units. SC-25 coming in to cluster this. I kind of want to see if it took out anything. Hold up. Because I knew there was infantry in here, so we got nine... 9-11. No. Okay. That's just wrong. Cluster didn't do anything. Okay. I just wanted to see that. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, there's nothing you can do to stop this. Spetsnaz together with Desan Nikis or Modus Relikis or anything. And anything with an Iki at the end. Just deadly mix. Deadly blend. Right now, since we don't really see anything with this BRDM-2, we're gonna move up some BMD-2s right behind Fox. It's going to be a glorious day. That artillery is painful though. I do have to say. I hawk in the back. That is just, that is just wrong. I hate to see AA like this. When you see AA, like on the front line, and you can easily take it out, you already know that this unit or this player does not have anything left on the front line. He might have um, redirected a ton of his troops to the far right side, especially his helicopter force. That for sure was redirected. For sure, for sure. Easy games here, mech rifles. I feel like I feel like the US misses like some shock and some shock troops in general. SU25 is just chilling, not really doing much. But even now, I have units in the back in case I somehow lose all of this. Oof. Here we go. F4Fs coming in, flying over my gazillion man pads. Let's see how they do. Missing all of that. We took out this one though. Oh, is he gonna fly over? Oh, please fly over my. Yeah, no, he's not. MiG 29 is going after that booty. I 
can't believe we have to gun run a plane. There we go. Good job, buddy. Rudnitsky. Pretty good. Now with that, basically the enemy's fate is sealed, as you can probably imagine. On the left side here, we have uh, Prots just moving all the way down here. This guy, B. Martin, I mean, probably not the best player, but literally everyone was like level 10 or so. Including, I'm only level 8, guys. I'm a noob, alright? Relax. Porter's getting taken out by the BMD-2s. Lovely sight. Desan Nikis and Spetsnaz just charging across. Getting fire support from the BMD-2s, from the MI-24 VP. I just love this. This is the this is the prettiest types of games. Beautiful. Not quite sure where we destroyed M1A1 or M1A1. Okay. Oh, with the AT. Yeah. That'll do it. BMD-2 with a full destroying a full truck of infantry. Okay. Rest in peace infantry, I guess. Oh god, no. That is a nasty BMD position. That is very unfortunate. Yeah, those were actually full. So we destroyed uh, two squads of them with the BMD. But he is now going to get clapped. Obviously. Now we're opening up with the Urgans, or Grads, I should say, on this little patch of forest there. I don't know if I was the one taking out that tank, but we probably did some damage. Oh, they do have one of those uh, French gun AAs, so though. That is pretty painful. They're really good against helicopters. Oh, it's a get part, okay. Thought it was a French unit. And Gephardt seems really good. I definitely gotta build some uh, West German divisions. Yeah, dude, I gotta really build up on that. MiG-25 coming in, though, with its uh, seed missile. Luckily, I believe we survive. Do we? Yeah, we do. Wow, that was lucky. We do survive that one. Pretty nice. And with that, we control Foxtrot. That was a really fun battle. That was a ton of fun. Now we're plus three. Basically, their fate is definitely sealed. Delta is almost in our hands as well. And we now control one of the major roads that lead into Delta. So uh, in terms of, uh, you know, resupplying or reinforcing Delta, they can forget it. We've moved up our Desanikis into the next patch of woods here. And if this were to be like a total destruction type of game, I could then move up into these buildings put my AA here and basically block off anything. Speaking of AA, there's a little bit of AA in these uh, behind those trees there. Mech rifles. They only have 675 meters range. And basically my my tanks or my transports are at about 900 meters. That's pretty good. So these guys have a 1575 meters range, so if you press C on them, it can uh, tell you what their um, area of engagement is with the Metis. That's pretty nice as well. For example, the rockets, they'll tell you their range. The MiG-29 somehow, two of them somehow managing to not destroy that helicopter. But we took out two planes for the price of one. Not bad. Not bad at all. And the Apache gets clapped by the BMD-2. Love to see it. So on the right side, we keep advancing with our Desan Nikis, the Cheeky Brikis. Bert is still trying to do some things. I don't know if these actually have infantry in them. That would be pretty interesting if they actually did have some units in that. But we're just, we're just falling back just to make sure. We don't need to go too crazy at this point. No need for that. Nom de Guerre pushing up a lot of infantry into that uh, little zone there to uh, try to capture it. I bet they don't have much in Bravo. I just want to check. Okay, they still do actually have a lot of units in here. Roland's, Milan teams, Leopard 1A1s. How expensive are these? 80 points? Yeah, they're not good. Decent gun though. Pretty decent cannon on that. Not bad at all. 
Yeah, Norm de Guerre, really good player actually. I liked his overall like army composition, if that makes sense. It's just nice and like spread out. On the left here, we're just helping with some rockets to try to dislodge. Dislodge their like uh, PVADs and we also, I believe. Did we already take an Abrams out? No. No, it was the MiG-27, I think. Wait, what? No, it wasn't the MiG-27, but something fired a missile at that thing. Was it the... Uh... Oh, it might have been this guy. I don't know. No, definitely wasn't. Something took it out. We will never know. But with that, we also officially control Delta. We are now plus four. Massive. Yeah, this was a ton of fun. I, like, obviously we won, right? You could probably have guessed that when the red bar was over there. But to me, it's not about winning in this game. It's about having an entertaining battle. And the main reason I'm actually posting about this replay, like, I played this in the middle of the night. I was just trying to relax and have a good fight. The only reason I posted this was because of this. We did such a cool... We had such a cool battle on the right side. We smoked it, we pushed up, we had man pads going in, like... Dog fights, helicopters blasting each other. It was amazing. Did we capture any conquest points? No. But did we capture any, you know, class points? Absolutely. That was a ton of fun. But also, like, strategically, it opens up the way to move units into these... Uh, you know, towards the river. Or as we did here, to move units just across this road and just quickly bypass all the enemy units that they had here. Because a lot of people don't have secondary or tertiary defensive positions. I, s I sound like a nerd back there. Our helicopters, though, aren't having the best time here. The PVADS is a bit of a problem. Super accurate thing. Jeez. 35% accuracy. That is nasty. Yeah, we're just trying to fall back with them at this point. The one thing I really like about AA now, or with the prioritization system in, in this game in general, is if there's two units you're firing at with your AA. If one of them is stunned, it'll automatically fire at the other one. Because, you know, that's more of a that's more of a threat. Yeah, we are just chilling at this point. We're just we're just straight up chilling. Poor poor supply truck, man. That was that was uncalled for. I'm getting bird banned from war now. There you go, air to ground, we are now in range. I really like that they've shown this. Really nice. There goes a Bradley. Do we... Oh man, I was gonna say, do we take out the PVATs, but no. Number one player, but you know what, I don't even care about that. It was just a really fun fight. We did get the, lo the most kills in the game. Uh, not the least uh, losses, but third least? Yeah, third least. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So KD here, um, let me see here if anything really pops out. Nothing, oh wow, this guy killed three planes, that's pretty good. The Akula AT did a good job, taking out the AA and everything. A BMD2 doing a decent job there. Yeah, nothing really too crazy, the M110. And the American artillery is nasty. Also the A10 did destroy those three T-64s. So all in all, really good. What was our KD score like that even shows? Oh, we can't go into that because it's a replay. Well, yeah, ton of fun, ton of fun. I really enjoyed this. If you do want to support these channels or this channel, please do become a patron, and I'll see you guys back in the next one. Take care.